Hello everyone, welcome to this video about how to interpret elbow x-rays. We will focus on the ABCS method for interpretation and it will include pathologies for you to practice. Before we start the main assessment of the x-ray, we have to do a few things. These things are important to not forget and if you plan to go up to an exam, then many examiners think of the pre-work as essential to pass. First, we have to identify that it is the correct patient, both by name and their personal number. Afterwards, we have to see what projections we have, if we have all the correct projections, and if we have the ones that we require. Lastly, we check the quality of the picture. To assess the quality of the picture, you have to look at three things. All structures should be included. Your impression of the resolution should be good. And lastly, it should not include excessive parts of the body, taking away from the area of interest. The x-ray to the right here, I would say is bad due to it being too much zoomed in. There are two projections that we commonly look at when we look at elbow x-rays. A third modality is also required in some cases. First, we take an anterior-posterior view. The arm is straightened out and laid on top of a receiver. An x-ray producing device sends x-rays then from the anterior side to the posterior side where the receiver measures the amount of x-rays absorbed. This view is good for looking at the joint itself and most bones except from the olecranon for any fractures. Next we have the lateral view. The arm is put in a position such as shown on the picture. This view is great for seeing any dislocations and for having another angle to view fractures from. Lastly, in some cases we require an external oblique view. This one is better than the lateral one if we specifically are interested in looking at the radial head. This is just to show the difference between the lateral and the external oblique view. Notice that the whole radius is better visualized in the external oblique one, while the ulna and the humerus is better visualized in the lateral view. We will quickly go through the anatomy of the elbow. If you're confident about this, then just skip ahead. First, we have the distal part of the humerus, marked green. The distal part of the humerus has itself more interesting structures that we have to know of. The most distal surface that is articulating with the ulna is the atrochlea. The surface that goes against the radius is the capitulum. On each side of the distal humerus, we have both the lateral and the medial epicondyle. Next, we have the ulna. The most important other part of the ulna is the olecranon. The olecranon goes behind the humerus and this joint is what allows us to flex the arm. Lastly, we have the radius. For the radius, we need to note the head and the neck, marked turquoise and yellow respectively. We also have the radial tuberosity in pink, which goes against the ulna. When looking at bone x-rays, there are many ways that you can go forward. One mnemonic that you could use is the ABCS method. As with all other bone x-rays, it works well for the shoulder. A stands for alignment, B is for bones, C is for cartilage, and S is for soft tissue. First things first, A for alignment. In this step, we mainly look at how the bones are situated compared to each other. First, according to the AP view, in the AP view, you quickly go over the bones and how they are situated compared to each other. It should go quite fast. First, you look at the radial head and how it is situated just below the capitulum, right here. Afterwards, you take on how the ulna and the olecranon is situated compared to the trochlea, right here. Then, that the radio ulnar joint is in place, here. And lastly, you scan over the joint space between the humerus and the radius and ulna. The AP view should just be quickly scanned over to ensure that the four points mentioned are as they should be. The lateral view is more interesting when it comes to alignment. There are two lines that it is crucial to look at when you interpret an elbow x-ray. The first line is called the anterior humeral line. As the name suggests, this is a line that goes on the anterior side of the humerus. We also have the radio capitulum line. This line goes straight through the middle of the radius as shown. 
as you can see, these lines intersect in the capitulum. It should intersect somewhere around the middle to the anterior third of the capitulum. If the lines doesn't go through the area here, a fracture or a dislocation has to be suspected. If the problem is that the anterior humeral line uh, is not going through the capitulum, a supracondylar fracture has to be suspected. Supracondylar refers to the most distal portion of the humerus. If the problem is in the radiocapitulum line, a dislocation of the radius has to be suspected. Now we will quickly look at some quick pathologies when it comes to alignment. And now for the obvious part, bones. What you especially have to pay attention to when looking at bones is the cortex. The cortex is the outline of the bones. You should also pay attention to the texture and the density of the bones. When scanning the cortex to do one bone at a time, when doing one bone at a time, it makes it less likely to miss anything important. First, do the humerus. Start from one side at the most proximal part. Which side it is doesn't matter, but continue all the way around until you're done with the whole bone. It is really important to scan the cortex of the whole bone, as otherwise it is easy to miss out on a possible fracture. Second, you go with the ulna. Again, start with one side and scan it all the way around. Lastly, you have the radius and you do the same thing. Start on one side and scan it all the way around. So what do you actually look at when you do this? Any breach in the cortex indicates a possible fracture. As an example, take a look at these two lateral images of the elbow. The left one is without any pathologies. The right one though has as indicated by the arrows, a breach in the cortex. The breach goes from one side and out on the other side, telling us that it is a fracture around that area. The breach might not always be visible all the way through, but it is usually the case. Another point that you will see is that the fragments may in some cases be dislocated towards each other. As seen here, the edges of the cortex is moved compared to each other, so it is dislocated, even if it is just by a little bit. It's important that when we look at x-rays for children and teenagers, we have to consider that there are still growth zones present. For the untrained eye, these zones can look like fractures. There are six different centers in the elbow, and as we get older, they will fuse together with other bones. If you have an x-ray of a child, or teenager, and there are lines separating these ossification centers from the rest of the bone, then it is totally normal. Not all of these six different zones are present at the same time, and the time in which they fuse is highly variable between people. Now we will look at some different pathologies according to point B. First I will show some x-rays with some kind of pathology, and afterwards I will indicate where the pathology is located. Here, we have a fracture in the head of the radius. The fragment is also slightly dislocated towards the lateral side. This is a transcondylar fracture of the distal humerus. Breaches in the cortex can be seen as indicated by the red arrows. Furthermore, as indicated by a dotted green line, the fracture has gone throughout the whole bone. It is also dislocated uh, laterally and proximally. Here we can see a fracture in the ulna. Specifically, it is in the coronoid process as indicated by the red arrow. C is for cartilage. Cartilage isn't actually visible on x-rays, but what we can see is joint spaces where the cartilage is. So what we actually look at in point C is the joint space. Abnormally large spaces can indicate a ligament damage, and narrow spaces typically indicates that there are some sort of degenerative process, osteoarthritis being the best example. One of the main things that you will look at, as mentioned, with these points that will hint towards osteoarthritis.
Now the things that you will see in osteoarthritis, also known as osteoarthrosis, are first of all, a smaller joint space. The joint space is narrowed and it is usually variable in how narrow it is throughout the whole joint. Subchondral sclerosis means that the bone below the cartilage has gotten harder. This shows as a bright white area of the bone just below the surface. Osteophytes are small bony projections that have formed near the joint margin. And lastly, in some cases, a cyst or more cysts can be seen inside the bone. In this example, there's a possible cyst indicated by a blue arrow. The last point, S, stands for soft tissue. The main thing that we'll do here is to notice any swellings and effusions. There is especially one sign here that you should know of, called the sail sign. The sail sign suggests a fracture of one or more bones in the elbow area. As you can see here, there are two fat pads on each side of the humerus, one anterior and one posterior, and together these two form something that looks like a sail. The anterior fat pad is often present alone on normal x-rays, and if it is just the anterior fat pad, then it is totally normal. The posterior one, however, is always pathological and indicative of intraarticular fracture. So if you see this sign, but you don't see any clear fracture, it should still be treated as it is, if it is a fracture. Thank you for watching. I hope it has been educational. And if you have any questions, feel free to post it below. Cheers.